There are many anomalies in the investing world that people try to take advantage of to increase their returns or project how their investments will do in the near future. However, most of them end up being not super helpful on the return side of things in the long run as they aren't consistent enough to rely on, or they aren't significant enough to make up for any costs that would be associated with executing the strategy in the first place. But they are still interesting to talk about. So today we're going to be taking a look at another one of those market anomalies that, at least for a while, actually looked like it might break the mold and become something that was both consistent and significant enough to become a worthwhile strategy to pursue, especially as an active trader. Or, at the very least, to give us a bit of a heads up on what was coming down the investing pike. Let's talk about the Santa Claus Rally. But before we get going, be sure to like this video if you haven't already, as it really does help out the channel a lot, and subscribe with notifications on for more money-related videos like this one every single week. And if you want to further support this channel, you can check out some of the links I've left in the description below, which includes a link to my Patreon page. This is the best way to show your support for this channel, and in addition to that, you can also get early access to new videos and exclusive content such as spreadsheets based off the ideas we discuss in these videos. The spreadsheets will allow you to play with your own numbers and see how big of a difference some of the ideas we discuss can make for your own personal financial situation. The Santa Claus Rally refers to the tendency for the stock market to grow more than normal over the last five trading days of December and the first two trading days of January. Dating back to 1928, the average daily price return, meaning the returns without factoring in dividends or reinvestments, for the S&P 500 has been about 0.02%. The median return is a bit higher at around 0.04%. However, during the last five trading days of the year and the first two of the next, the average price return of the market jumps all the way up to 0.24%. The median doesn't grow quite as dramatically, but it's still more than triple the median of the other trading days at around 0.13%. Granted, we're only talking about seven trading days here. But that is not an insignificant difference, especially if you're sitting on a decent nest egg. Hypothetically, if John had invested the entirety of his $1 million nest egg into the S&P 500 in a perfectly average year, then based on this data set, it would grow to around $1,017,000, or 1.7% in total, over the course of the Santa Claus rally. Compare this to the typical outcome of any other 7-day trading stretch during the year, and his nest egg would grow to only around $1,001,400, or 0.14% in total. That's a difference of $15,600 over the course of 7 days, which is not too bad if I do say so myself. What's more is going beyond the simple averages, we also see that the baseline and stretch returns are favorable as well. During the Santa Claus rally, the baseline daily return, or the 20th percentile return, was negative 0.43%, which granted isn't great because it is negative, but the baseline daily return for all other similar stretches of time was negative 0.62%. So even though it was negative, it's still better than what we typically see throughout the rest of the year. The stretch return for the rally was 0.86% per day, compared to 0.68% during the rest of the year. So alright, even though it is a small sample size and a short period of time, we can see that the returns are good compared to other points in the year. But has the Santa Claus rally been something that an investor could actually rely on year in and year out, or was it more of a case of a few good years dragging those averages up while the rest of the years were more or less the same as we'd see in April or August? Well, as it turns out, looking back at the data, the Santa Claus rally has been pretty darn reliable for a market anomaly. Since 1928, the final five trading days of the year and the first two of the next have produced a positive net return 78% of the time. Compare that to all other points in the year, that is quite impressive, because outside of the Santa Claus rally period, the markets tend to rise in about 56% of seven trading day stretches. So it's pretty clear that, historically speaking, the returns of the stock market have been comparably stronger when we're turning our attention to the North Pole than they are during the rest of the year, and we tend to see the markets rise much more reliably than at any of the other points in the year as well. But why is that? Well, over the years, there have been several theories that have been thrown out there. Here are some of the most common ones that I've seen brought up. The first is that some institutional investors tend to go on vacation over the holidays, and thus may not be quite as active in the markets as they are the rest of the year. The theory is that, on average, these institutional investors tend to be a little bit more pessimistic with their trades than the average retail investor. 
And as a result, when the markets are mostly left to the retail investors, we tend to see a bit more of a bullish trend take shape. The second is that many investors are receiving their holiday bonuses or other influxes of cash during this time frame, and some of that money does get funneled into the markets, leading to a rise in valuations. Tax considerations can also come into play as some tax-advantaged accounts have contribution deadlines that are set up around the end of the calendar year. So if you have some investors who are trying to max out their retirement contributions in that final month, that could have a similar effect as those holiday bonuses. Another potential contributing factor is investors, mainly in the past, may have been trying to buy into the market while prices were low in preparation for something known as the January effect. The January effect is another one of those market anomalies that suggests that the markets tend to rise more frequently than normal in the month of January. However, it also seems to have become less reliable in the recent past, so it may not be playing as much of a role in the Santa Claus rally nowadays. Finally, we can't discount the idea that during the holidays, investors may simply be more optimistic about the future than they are at many of the other points during the year. Optimism and hope are obviously very closely linked to the holiday season. We see it every year with New Year's resolutions. And if that optimism allows investors to pull the trigger on an investment that they had been considering for a while, that could lead to a bump in valuations as well. Whichever theory or combination of theories you believe to be the reason the Santa Claus rally has been a thing, there is no doubting the fact that it has been a thing. Now, whether that means investors should actually be doing anything about it is another question entirely. I'd tend to lean towards saying that investors shouldn't be changing their strategy at all to account for the Santa Claus rally, especially since much of those impressive return figures we talked about a moment ago tend to peter out when you start looking at more recent data. For instance, if we look at data from the last 20 years, we would see that the average 7-day return for the Santa Claus rally falls from around 1.7% to around 0.95%. Its median return also falls from around 1.6% to just over 1%. That's quite a significant drop-off. Now granted, markets still did rise in 80% of those years. It's just that the rise wasn't nearly as big as in the past. The last thing I want to touch on with the Santa Claus rally is what typically follows it. I've read online that a Santa Claus rally that fails to materialize can suggest that a sluggish year for the markets is about to take place. The idea is that if investors either don't have the funds to invest in the markets over the holidays, or that they do have the funds but still choose not to put them into the markets, we probably aren't headed for anything good. So I wanted to take a moment to see if the data actually backs that idea up. And as it turns out, it's a bit of a mixed bag. In the year following those 20 instances that a rally has failed to materialize, the markets have risen 12 times. In other words, when there is no Santa Claus rally, the stock market is higher 12 months later, 60% of the time anyway. In the 72 times that the rally has materialized, the markets rose in about 65% of the following years. On average, the markets grew by about 7.6% in the years following a successful rally and 6.6% in the years when a rally failed to materialize. However, the roughest years actually tended to follow successful rallies. For instance, in 1929, the markets rallied by 5% during the holidays before falling 24% over the course of 1930. Over the 1930 holidays, the market bounced back from a rough year rallying by 6% before falling by 53% in 1931. As for the oil crisis of the early 1970s, the markets rallied by 3% in 1972 before falling 17% in 1973. It rallied again over the holidays of 1973, rising by 7%, before falling another 30% over the course of 1974. The recession of the early 1980s showed us both sides of the coin, with a 2% rally over the course of the 1980 holidays leading to an 11% decline in 1981, and a failed rally over the 1981 holidays leading to a 15% rise in the markets in 1982. The dot-com crash began after a 6% rally over the 2000 holiday season. And finally, the rallies were just barely positive in 2019, preceding the start of this most recent downturn. On the bright side, the best years for the market also tend to follow the Santa Claus rallies. This is showcased by the max and stretch growth figures for each scenario. The best year following a successful Santa Claus rally was 1933, when the markets rose by 49%. The stretch return following rallies was 24%. Compare this to the max and stretch returns following failed rallies of 30% and 19% respectively, and you can see the difference. So after looking at the data, I'm not sure I'd put too much stock in the idea that down years often follow failed Santa Claus rallies. For one thing, the historical likelihood of a down year appears to be pretty darn similar regardless of whether the Santa Claus rally materialized or not. And for another, the worst down years often, though not always, 
seem to follow successful rallies. The same can also be said for many of the best years. That just goes to show that these anomalies, even the ones that have been around for many years and have actually been fairly reliable, are probably not worth getting too worked up about for most investors, especially if you're looking long term. Yes, there may be a chance to improve your returns a bit in some cases, but once the anomaly becomes common knowledge, much of that potential gain tends to disappear throwing that risk-reward calculations totally out of whack. And of course, this is before taking into account things like trading costs or tax implications of an investor actually trying to take advantage of the anomaly. But that'll do it for me today. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button if you haven't already, subscribe, and hit that bell next to my name so you'll be notified of all my future uploads. I generally upload every single Monday, and if you have a friend that would be interested in this kind of content, be sure to share it with them. Let's really get this information out there and start our own financial revolution.